Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I have a haul for you guys. I hope this is not a tone deaf haul. Please know that I ordered most of these books in February, long before anything really hit the fan, so to speak. And um, yeah, I don't anticipate a haul much happening unless it's one or two books I get from Paperback Swap or something. So it's probably my last haul for a little while and that's okay because as you all have seen, if you've watched anything on my videos or you have eyeballs to see everything here, I am not short of books to read. So this haul is for my Thingiversary. So Thingiversary is a weird word, I realize. Um, I have been a member of Library Thing since today, April 4th in 2008. And uh, maybe a year or two after that, um, someone in the 75ers group, which is people who just want to read 75 books in a year, um, mentioned doing an anniversary for library thing. And of course, everything has to have a like its own little nickname or whatever. So Thingiversary, the term, was born. Um, the deal with a Thingiversary is that you buy yourself books for the, uh, each book, a book for the number of years that you have been a member, plus one to grow on. So since this is 2020 and I joined in 2008, that means I have 13 books in my Thingiversary haul this year. It's getting a little harder to find what I really want to read these days, which sounds absolutely ridiculous because I want to read everything, all the things, all the time. But what I want to spend money on and what I want to have on my shelf, that's different, you know? So... I placed an order from Waterstones in February. I placed an order from Book Outlet in February. And I think I have one book depository book that was I just got this week and I had ordered, you know, several weeks ago. So to start, I will go through some of my extra Book Outlet books that I ordered for the Booktube Prize in nonfiction. I checked earlier for fiction since I was assigned fiction group for the first round, the Octo Finals. This second round, the quarterfinals, I am in nonfiction. So I thought I, I never checked Book Outlet to see if anything that was on the long list was there. And several books were. So I will start with those first. And after this first round, this Octo Finals just ended, only one of these is going forward into the quarterfinals. And that is this book, Sea People, The Puzzle of, Puzzle of Polynesia, excuse me, by Christina Thompson. I believe this is a history, genealogical, travel-y kind of a combination of a book, and it sounds super, super interesting. I am really pleased that this one has gone through because I hadn't heard of it previously or seen it anywhere, honestly, and this sounds so fascinating. I love travel stuff. So yeah, that's the first one. Of course, I'm not assigned that in my group, but you know, whatever. Um, next up that was on the long list or short list, I should say, was The Last Pirate of New York, A Ghost Ship, A Killer, and the Birth of a Gangster Nation by Rich Cohen. Um, this sounds a little bit Gangs of New York-y plus Pirates, and I am here for that. Whatever it is, I'm here for it, but that combination sounds really fascinating. Next up, Fascinating, Archaeology from Space, How the Future Shapes Our Past by Sarah, was it Parkak, Parchek, Parsek? Don't know, but again, really, really interesting. I would love to be able to like go up and see the Earth from space, like orbit around, but seeing as how I get car sick if I am in the back seat or if I turn around too fast, I get nauseated. I know that this is way beyond anything. Even if I had money for it, I could never do this. I would just be like, so sick the entire time I couldn't see it. Anyways, archaeology is something I wanted to do when I was a little kid. So I've always had a fascination with it. And being able to see this stuff from space, from pictures, and what we can learn. Like, fascinating, fascinating. Super interesting. Next is The Widow Washington, The Life of Mary Washington by Martha Saxton. So I have pretty much talked myself into starting a presidential read-through, like a lot of people have been doing for quite a while but um so I'd like to read one book about each president and whenever available I'd like to read a book about their wives as well because they existed they were there they had influence whether they knew it or not or the presidents you know acknowledged it or not I don't know how old school we're going to get here with people but I have my book now for Mary Washington so there's that 
and there's a potential family connection with the Washingtons. I, a family legend is that um, one of my relatives was his personal, like postmaster, postman, delivered stuff to him, and we supposedly have one of Washington's spurs at my parents' house. Supposedly, I mean, who knows? I don't know how to check that, but. So I've always been extra interested in Washington, not just because he was the first president, but because of that maybe connection. Anyways, next up is the catalog of shipwrecked books by Edward Wilson Lee, Christopher Columbus, his son, and the quest to build the world's greatest library. I mean, a huge library on a ship crossing an ocean. Yes, please. Yes to all of this. And then a book that my mom just gave me that she read, and I am under strict instructions to read it very soon because she is pissed off, damn it, that she can't talk about it with anyone. That is The Long Call by Anne Cleves, the first in the Matthew Venn series, a brand new series. I think the second one is supposed to come out in November, December. This one came out in November, and I really enjoy Anne Cleves' writing, so this should be, I'm sure, very good. And if my mom has any say in it, I will start reading this this afternoon. She's already asked me three times if I have started reading it. I've had it for about five days. I said, no, I haven't. I mean, anyways. So now this part is my official Thingiversary haul. And The Five by Haley Rubenhold. This is everywhere, as you know. You've, I'm sure everyone knows about this book by now. It's won the Bailey Gifford. It's been on lots of people's best of list for last year. It shockingly fell off in the Octofinals for BookTube. I was, my mouth dropped open when I saw that. A couple days ago, I thought, oh my God, really? Wow. Anyways, should be really, really interesting. Victorian London of any kind. Jack the Ripper, always fascinating, I, you know. But I'd love to read about the lives of these ladies that wasn't just about their death. So I am excited about this one. This is a booktube influence. This is Muriel Spark, The Driver's Seat. Um, partially because of everyone doing Memento mori for Adam. And um, he likes Muriel Spark, apparently. That's why I'm gathering from everyone doing other things. Um, and I'm newer to Adam's channel, so I don't know as much. But I know I follow everyone else who did the Memento Moriathon. So, anyways, um, so because of that, I got this, and because Tom of Tom Reads Things and Simon of Savage Reads talked about this and really liked it, and actually Sean the Book Maniac did too. So, yeah. I'll try and remember to link everyone below. I'm sorry if I don't remember, but you know, I'm assuming that most of you know who those people are since they're much bigger than I am, but yeah. And then next up is a Molly Panter Downs collection of wartime stories. Good evening, Mrs. Craven. Um, I picked this one up because I like books about the war, um, especially on the home front. Diaries, if they're fictional or not, I really, really enjoy them. And I needed a Persephone book for a challenge I am doing. My friend Leah on Litzy made her own personal bingo challenge, and I rambled about my version of that at the end of one of my videos a couple of months ago and realized that Persephone book was one of my squares, and the one Persephone book I owned, I was already using for a different square, so I was forced to buy another one. I mean, what a tragedy, right? So I chose this one. It should be really, really good. I mean... I can't think of anything I wouldn't like about it. And then this is the reason for my Waterstones order. That is The Mercies by Karen Millwood Hargreave. Um, how do you not love this cover? The, UK, the US cover is very nice too, and I would have gotten that, but I'm such a sucker for covers. And look at how beautiful this is. I mean, I almost don't want to read it because it's so nice. I don't want to ruin it by touching it, you know what I mean? I guess I am crazy, but this whole story sounds so fascinating, set in the 1600s about an island that becomes just run by women and what happens when the outside world finds out about that. So yeah, super, super interested. Glad for any excuse to order anything from the UK. Uh, next up is The Late Starters Orchestra by Ari L. Goldman. Uh, this is his little memoir about picking up the cello after 25 years and joining a small orchestra in Lower Manhattan. Lower Manhattan. And some people that joined have never played before and they're learning an instrument for the first time. Some are coming back after several years. Um, but it just sounds so interesting. As a former violist, I hold that stuff very close to my heart and I really, really miss playing. 
I'm hoping that by reading this book, this will give me the kick in the pants I need to just suck it up and join a local orchestra and just do it already, you know? But I've been real hesitant to start, so I'm hoping this will be just when I need to get me moving. So I really miss playing. One of my favorite physicists, which is not a sentence I thought I would ever say, Michio Kaku. <laughs> this is Physics of the Impossible. Teleportation and um, I think phasers and force fields are in here and super fascinating stuff. And it's the science about how they could work or can't work or what's coming up. Sadly, there's not anything in here about black holes. I love a good black hole. That's what she said. Um, but this should be really interesting about if any of this stuff is possible. I would like to hope so. Probably not, but you know, I don't know this stuff. I'm not a science person. Next up is This Is Your Brain on Music, The Science of a Human Obsession by Daniel, Daniel, that's a word, Daniel J. Levitin. Um, just the science of how your brain works on music. I mean, right there on the tin. I do have Musicology, which I believe is by Oliver Sacks, who blurbed it here, who blurbed this book, and um, haven't read it yet. Why would I read a book I own? But how music affects us is so fascinating. Some people, I'm sure you know this, maybe you're like this too, don't really notice or care about music. It doesn't bother them. And then there are people like me who I can be moved to tears by something in five seconds. I mean, I just, it's, I feel it so much. It's so internalized and it means so much to me. And it's any genre. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, something can just hit you and oh my God, I mean, music is so important to me. So really interested to see what science says about this. And I believe this book is um, a more recent publication versus musicology. So I'm curious to see what the difference is, if there is any, between the two books. That sounds like a fun little side project that I don't need to do, but I probably will. Then we have The World Broken 2, Virginia Woolf, T.S. Eliot, D.H. Lawrence, E.M. Forster, and The Year That Changed Literature. This is about 1922 and how the world had changed post World War One, and how these four authors, particular in particular, which I think I have read and loved something by every one of them. D.H. Lawrence is the one that was just okay, but I only read a couple books, so what do I know? Any recommendations for him? Please leave a comment below. Um, but this sounds really interesting. I love three out of the four, and the other one was fine. Um, excuse me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I've been a little hiccupy today. Um, but reading about this history and these people and how they changed literature and modern literature, I should say, and how that still has carried through to today sounds really, really interesting. So thank you, Book Outlet, for just depleting me of money constantly. <laughs> um, another reason for me ordering for Book Outlet is Doris of Aldi Books and Heidi from My Reading Life. They did a group read of The Great Influenza by John M. Barry the end of last year, early this year. And it just sounds so fascinating. I was thinking I would be able to read this right away, but I I don't think I can anymore. So it'll just be on my shelves waiting for me, ready whenever I can handle it. But it should be really fascinating. Getting there. In Search of Our Roots, a history of 19 African Americans. I love Henry Louis Gates Jr. And I love Finding Your Roots on PBS. It's such a great show. And I had read parts of this book before from the library and had to return it before it was due and just never got back to it. So I'm glad I have a copy I can go through on my own time and catch up on the things that I didn't read and reread the things that I want to. So fascinating genealogy stuff. That's a little too tippy. Next, Sophie Hanna's Agatha Christie's The Mystery of Three Quarters. Uh, several years ago, Sophie Hanna got the okay or she was approached by, I'm not sure which, but the estate of Agatha Christie um, gave her the okay to write new Hercule Poirot stories. I have read the whole series except for the last one because I'm afraid I'm going to cry too much. Um, but I read the first one that she wrote and it was absolutely wonderful. It was like the best of Christie minus any casual racism. I mean, what more can you ask for? So I am looking forward to reading this third in the new series. Second to last here, No Ordinary Time by ooh, Doris Kearns Goodwin. Holy crap. Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, The Home Front in World War II. Again, fairly timely. I've always liked Eleanor Roosevelt. And um, 
I'm on a sort of nonfiction presidential kick a little bit as it is, and I already own her other big one that everyone else seemed to pick for the Reed Doris tag um, about Lincoln and his cabinet. Oh my God, what is that called? Team of Rivals, that's it. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> This is really heavy. So this was on Book Outlet for just a few dollars because it's a little misprinted on the cover. I don't care about that. So again, fascinating and ready for my presidential project whenever that happens. And last but far from least, I am so, so excited about reading this one. I am really pleased. It is Habert by Roberto Pastore. Um, I've really been thinking about getting back into poetry again and seeing um, Bert and Shawnee on their channel past story time, which is wonderful and lovely. I really wish I could like hang out with them and meet them. They seem so nice. Um, but I saw them read this and Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd. And I think Doris hauled this and loved it. And I just, I'm happy to support someone that I know and adore, even if it's just virtually. And it's poetry and I, I just... I'm so excited to read this. I know I'm going to love it. And I am very happy to have had this perfect excuse to buy this book. Um, I just can't wait to read it. So I'll probably tuck in this afternoon, quite honestly. So that is a big old stack of books for my Thingiversary and Extra haul. I don't know if I'll have a haul anytime soon like anyone else. I mean, who knows what the world is going to be like. And certainly money is not something that most of us, certainly me, has a lot of extra lying around of right now, seeing as how I can't work. So I hope you're all doing well. Please check in with me below if you want to. I've been crap about commenting back recently, and I'm very sorry. I just couldn't concentrate on getting on the computer. But I will get back on it now that I'm going to be uploading this. And take care of yourself and take care of others. Check on your friends and neighbors. Social distancing. Wash your hands. You know all the thing. Stay healthy and safe, and I hope that you can read something wonderful and distracting, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.